Hey everybody, it's Brandon Scheid with Slingshot Sports and I'm excited to be with you today because you just purchased your Phantasm foil kit. Now there's a few critical parts and pieces here in the case. I wanna go over what's included in the case, how to assemble it and get you on the water quickly so that you can get out and enjoy the feel of the float. So the first thing you notice here is we have this really nice deluxe carrying case. This case is compact and it also has padded space for all the parts and pieces that come with the Phantasm kit. This is great for travel, chucking it in your car. Um, it keeps all your carbon stuff looking brand new. So let's go ahead and start pulling out parts and pieces so we can get this thing assembled. First and foremost, we're gonna pull out our fuselage. In this case, we are assembling a short fuselage um, for this video assembly. There's a slightly different assembly, whether you're doing a short fuselage or a long fuselage, we'll be covering both of those in this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. Up next is my mask. Now, depending on the kit you may have you may have purchased, this mask can vary in length from 72 to 102. For this, we're assembling the PFH 657 kit, which comes with a 102 mast. It's the longest mast, and it's really good for kiteboarding. We have our front wing. You notice it also comes with a neoprene sleeve that's gonna help keep your wing in looking in good shape on and off the water. See? Beautiful, full carbon construction. Gonna set that aside. We're gonna get our rear wing or our stabilizer out. Again, also comes in its own neoprene sleeve to protect your wing. The last few things we're gonna need for this assembly are included in the other pouch. That is the Teflon tape and lanolin, which is gonna help protect um, your kit and anti-seize. And finally, hardware, supplied tool, as well as our quick start guide, which is gonna give you visual reference for all of the things we're gonna talk about today. All right, so now that you've gotten all your parts and pieces out of your kit, let's go ahead and go over the hardware lengths that are required to assemble and how we're gonna go ahead and get started. First things first, you wanna dump out the contents of your hardware pack and sort them by size. In this particular case, depending on which wing and fuselage combo you have, you're gonna have a variety of bolts to mount your wing to your fuselage. What I want you to do is go ahead and start sorting the bolts by size and type. You can see we're gonna have two M6 flathead short screws. We're going to have two to three barrel headed screws. And then we're gonna have three more flathead screws of a variety of lengths, depending on your kit. One of the easiest and general ways to think about this is if you're on a short fuselage setup, which we are today, the longest screw is going to go in the back and the shortest screw is gonna go into the front because the rear screw needs to go through the wing, the fuselage, and into the mast, while the front two screws just need to go through the wing into the fuselage. Another really great way to find out if you have the right lengths is go ahead and grab your bolts and drop them into your wing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna be looking for how much thread is sticking out on the wing when you flip this over. So as you can see, we have about the same amount of height coming out of these front two bolts, and that isn't gonna ensure that I'm getting a proper amount of thread tapped into my fuselage to make sure I have a secure connection. Now in this case, you can see back here, I have the longest amount sticking out in the back. And again, that's because this bolt needs to go through the fuselage and into the mast. So please refer to your quick start guide to get all the exact length specifications for these bolts. But again, for the short fuselage, general, you want your shortest bolt in the front, longest bolt in the back, and you can always check it by indexing your screws. Okay, so now that we've sorted our screws and we know where they're gonna go, we wanna prep the screws so that they don't corrode or unintentionally come undone. And that's where this little kit comes in. Included in this kit is some lanolin and Teflon tape. The Teflon tape is a like an anti-seize tape, and this lanolin is anti-corrosion grease. You wanna use this lanolin on any part that's gonna come in contact with carbon. There is some small electrolysis between aluminum and carbon, and we wanna negate that electrolysis by adding a barrier between the two. So you're gonna go ahead and apply this grease to your bolts, and you're gonna go ahead and Teflon tape your bolts. So take one minute, dab a little bit on your finger, and go ahead and coat all the bolts. You're gonna save yourself some time and you're gonna do it all in one bulk batch so that you don't need to do this for each bolt individually.
Now that I've applied my lanolin um, grease, I'm going to also wrap the bolts with Teflon tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab each bolt. I'm going to apply around three wraps of Teflon tape. Now you wanna make sure you put this on nice and tight and get it really deep into the threads. And when you get your three wraps, you can just pull on the tape, break it clean, and move on to the next bolt. So now that I have all my hardware coated in anti-seize grease and Teflon tape, I again wanna sort them by their size and their type. I wanna talk about some of the different offerings in the Phantasm line in the bigger wings. Now the biggest thing in the bigger wings difference is that the cord length of the wing is a lot longer. And that means that you need a longer fuselage to accept the cord length of the wing. So here I have the 710 fuse, and this kit is great for pumping and surfing. And there's a couple differences in the assembly. One, you're gonna have one more mass barrel head M6 screw, and that's a mass to fuselage connection. And your screws are gonna be different length because the thickness of your wing got a lot thicker. So just like before, you wanna take a second to put the, um, corrosion resistant grease, lanolin grease, and the Teflon tape on your screws to ensure a tight fit without corrosion. So take one second to grab those products and get your bolts prepped. So unlike the shorter fuselage assembly, you're gonna have one more extra bolt and the steps, depending on how long the cord length of your, of your front wing is, are gonna be a little bit different. So for these longer fuselage assemblies, I like to start by mounting the fuselage to the mast. Go ahead and pull out your lanolin again because there's, again, a little bit of electrolysis between aluminum and carbon, and we wanna ensure that there's a proper barrier for that. So I'm gonna take a small amount on my finger, and I'm just gonna go ahead and apply it to the inside surface of my fuselage. And again, this is to help prevent corrosion, especially when using this product in salt water, as the salt water acts as a catalyst for the electrolysis reaction. Again, I'm gonna check the taper of the profile to make sure that I'm putting this on in the correct orientation. I've already applied my grease to the inside of my cavity, and I'm gonna go ahead and index or slot my fuselage down onto my mast. Now that I have it slotted down on there, you can see there's three holes, and I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my three M6 barrel-headed screws and I'm just gonna hand start each one of those to get it going and slowly hand tighten them down. And then I'm gonna come back with my Torx tool, snug everything up. Once everything's snug, I'm gonna give it its final tighten to make sure that everything is nice and tight. Okay. Now just to make things easier, I'm gonna set the fuselage down. The next thing I wanna assemble is my rear stabilizer. So again, I have my rear stabilizer. Its orientation is to be like this when you're flying it with the winglets down. So I actually need to flip it over and ensure that the countersunk sides are facing, in this case, up. I'm gonna go ahead and align my two holes, and I'm gonna take the shortest M6 flatheads and push them through, aligning the hole up and just giving it a slight hand tighten to make sure that everything is aligned. Same as any other, you wanna go ahead and snug these down to ensure that the wing is mounted properly before you go ahead and tighten one really tight. So again, snug them down, flip the Torx, and give it that final snug tighten. Now, just like we did with the short fuselage, we have a variety of bolt lengths here, depending on which front wing we have. So the easiest way to find out um, that I have the right lengths is to index them into the holes, flip it over, and take a look. I know in this case that the longest bolt generally for the thicker cord length 
and thicker profile length wings is the center bolt because that's where the wing is physically the thickest. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my longest bolt in the front and the middle. And I'm gonna drop my next bolt size in the back. Again, I'm gonna touch these three, flip them over. And now you can see that I have all three bolts with approximately six to 10 threads or six to 10 mm sticking out the top of the bolt. And everything looks good, everything looks indexed, and everything looks flush and even. So I'm pretty confident with my bolt orientation. I'm gonna go ahead and flip those back over, pop those out, and remember what orientation I put them in. Just like before, I wanna take my big wing and I wanna set it on my fuse, just making sure that I have my holes somewhat aligned so that when I drop my hardware in, everything is close to its final position. Might take a little bit of fiddling, but not too hard. I wanna hand tighten those again, making sure that everything is in alignment and is fitting in the proper location. Hand tighten that down and give yourself a firm tighten to ensure that the parts fit well. Give it your final torque. Set that down. And now your foil is fully assembled and is ready to shred.